Are NFTs the biggest scam of this year? There's a lot of hype around NFTs, and they've been known to sell for thousands, tens of thousands, even millions of dollars. So in this video, I want to explore if there's actually value surrounding these digital collectibles, or are people just buying air? My name is Luke, and this is actually a very different video from what I usually put out on this channel, but it's a video I've been dying to make ever since I learned about NFTs almost a year ago. And since this channel is centered around collectibles, I thought it might be appropriate. Now, if you had asked me about a year ago, I would have told you that NFTs are absolutely a scam and you should stay away from them. And I still feel that way to some degree. But a few things have changed in the last few months that kind of have me rethinking some things. So I want to explore both sides of this with you. And I'm honestly going to share pretty much everything that I would have made a video on about a year ago. But like I said, I have kind of changed my perspective on it a little bit. So I want to play devil's advocate and give possibly that other perspective. Now, if you're new to NFTs, it stands for non-fungible token. Now, something that's fungible is something that's not unique. It can be easily exchanged uh, one thing of that item for another. Like for instance, you could trade a $10 bill for two $5 bills and you still have $10. You know, rice is a good example of something that's fungible as well. But something that's non-fungible is something that's unique and that would be difficult, if not impossible, to replace. Um, a house would be something that is non-fungible. Something like expensive artwork is non-fungible because there's something unique about that to where even if you made a copy or a print of it, it still is not the same thing as the original. And so in saying that, I actually wanna give a disclaimer that I actually really believe in the technology of NFTs. You know, in the future, I'm pretty sure, you know, when you buy a ticket to go to the movies or to a concert, those are going to be an NFT that um, basically guarantees you access to that movie or that concert. I think when you, uh, you buy a house, your deed to your house is going to be an NFT. So there's a lot of possibilities for this technology. But when most people talk about NFTs these days, what they're talking about is digital art and collectibles. And so that's what I'm going to be referring to for the rest of this video. And so NFTs have often been compared to fine art or even things like a Pokemon card. Now this is appropriate because this channel has basically been my journey of getting back into collecting Pokemon cards and it's been pretty fun. But um, it's kind of caused me to sort of think through how we attribute value to different things. Now the price for this card is not extremely expensive, it's about $30, but it's still way more than just probably the few cents of what it's made of, you know, cardboard and maybe a little bit of uh, uh, aluminum foil or whatever. So obviously the price for these sort of things is very subjective and it's based on something very specific that I wanna talk about, which is value. Now it's very obvious that people value NFTs, otherwise they wouldn't be spending so much on them. But my question is, is that value actually there? Is it really merited? So let's unpack the different layers for why we place value on things. So again, at the top of the ladder, you have the price and that's determined by the value. And so so what sort of value is often offered by collectibles? You know, for one thing, I guess you could say, you know, if someone is supporting that artist, if it's a piece of artwork, uh, that's a value that um, that they see in it. Another thing is by owning a piece of this artwork or this collectible, you're a part of a larger community. I'm a part of the Pokemon collector community. But I think the value that most people get from something like this Mewtwo card here is, first of all, the personal enjoyment of, uh, you know, maybe you appreciate the artwork. Uh, for me, obviously, there's a lot of nostalgia tied to this artwork, and so getting to display it in my room and get to uh, look at it, uh, it brings me some personal joy. And then the other big aspect of it is the clout that comes along with owning a very rare or very expensive Pokemon card or a piece of art. So again, the value that this is ultimately providing is that personal enjoyment and that clout. But what is driving that ultimately? You know, first of all, it is desirable. You know, in this case, it's a very popular character. And of course it has the uh, holographic foil on it and we love shiny things. But I think the even bigger aspect to it is the rarity of this card. And so what makes something rare? Obviously there is a limited supply of it. Even though you can find this card, there still are only so many that they've made. 
And then another aspect to it is that this uh, card is actually destructible. The fact that it is still around since the 90s is kind of an amazing thing, and the fact that it's still in decent condition is also an amazing thing. Now, um, you know, if you looked very closely at this, you'll see that there is like some white spots around the border of it. There's probably a few scratches on the hollow foil. And so that makes this, you know, a little bit less rare than one that is in pristine condition. Um, but th these are some of the aspects that contribute to rarity. But now let's look at these same layers and apply it to something such as digital art or digital collectibles. So obviously you have the price. Let's say you have a piece that's worth a thousand dollars. Obviously there is some sort of value that is contributing to that price. So what is the value? Again, there's that aspect of personal enjoyment. Maybe you like the artwork. Maybe you like the artist. You're trying to support the artist. Um, but then there's also, and I think this is the biggest part with NFTs, is the clout that comes along along with it. And again, if we compare this to a physical product, that cloud ultimately comes from owning something that is desirable and rare. And again, rarity is often determined by there being a limited supply of it. And so NFTs sort of seek to solve this problem of uh, creating rarity and creating scarcity for these digital images. But does it actually accomplish that? The argument that most skeptics are going to bring up is that, hey, I can go do a Google search on Google Images and find that same image and download it, and I can enjoy it the same way that you can, even though you're the NFT holder. And then the pro NFT rebuttal is going to be, well, you know, you have something like the Mona Lisa, and just because you look up an image on Google, that doesn't make it the same as enjoying the actual Mona Lisa. And it's true, owning a JPEG of the Mona Lisa is nothing like getting to experience it in person and see the very brush strokes of Da Vinci, let alone whoever actually owns the Mona Lisa, um, they get to experience it in any way they want. And it's the same with my Mewtwo card. I could look up an image on Google and find this on there, but there's just something special about being able to hold this in my hand and see the way it sparkles in different lighting. And honestly, even the little imperfections are part of what makes this unique and makes this special. But here's the difference with NFTs. The very JPEG that you're finding on Google may be the exact same high resolution JPEG that the NFT holder has in their possession. The experience of enjoying that artwork is literally the same between the person who paid thousands for it and the person who just looked it up real quick. And again, I would argue that part of what makes that real life experience of owning that piece of artwork or a Pokemon card is the fact that it's been so well preserved. And that is a feature of traditional ownership. I can literally do whatever I want with this card. I can rip it up. Don't worry, it's just a Parasec. My Mewtwo is perfectly fine. Um, I have the potential to lose this card. It could get stolen from me. But this is something that doesn't apply to an NFT. You know, how can you destroy a digital image that's probably been copied millions of times across the web? But in reality, when you buy an NFT, it's not even really the image itself that you own. You're buying a certificate. And the premise is supposed to be that by minting that NFT and creating this certificate, you own the original or whatever that means. And this is how an NFT is supposed to create rarity. And so you have to ask, what is ownership of that certificate really actually entail? Is it actually real ownership? You don't get to own the copyright. You don't even own exclusive rights to that image. You just own a certificate and a certificate saying what? Now, if that NFT came built in with a legal contract uh, granting you exclusive rights to that image, now that would be something. Then at least you could take legal action against anyone who is using it as their profile photo or downloading it and using it for themselves. Years ago, I actually produced uh, beats and tracks for other artists, and uh, you know I would always retain the copyright for that music, but when someone purchased it, I would actually give over exclusive of rights to that artist to where even I wouldn't be allowed to use it for commercial use anymore. 
But for instance, in the case of NBA Top Shot, I don't see them being willing to give anybody exclusive rights to their video footage. They wouldn't wanna give away that much control. That's just not how these NFTs are working. And meanwhile, literally anyone can go onto YouTube or even on the NBA Top Shot website and enjoy that same clip, the same as you, the NFT holder. And so all that to say, the so-called rarity that NFTs are supposed to create is artificial. You really do have to wonder, what do you actually own? Are you just buying air? As I've said, up until recently, these have been the totality of my thoughts towards NFTs. But two things have occurred in the last month or so that have caused me to kind of rethink this a little bit. The first is Facebook's rebrand to Meta and their push towards creating the metaverse. And so now it's starting to make it seem like owning digital property is not so far-fetched. And the second thing is that Twitter recently announced that they're working on a way to verify people's profile photo if they actually own that NFT. Gary Vee, who has been really big into NFTs, actually said that the one thing that's still kind of missing from the NFT space is the flex. Remember that we said that the biggest value that a lot of NFTs provide is that clout. But up until now, there hasn't really been a way to flex your NFTs and achieve that clout. What people have been doing, especially on Twitter, is you know uploading their NFT image as their profile photo as a way to flex their collection and you know show that they're a part of that community, show um, a little bit about their personality. If you think about it, it's very similar to the reason that we buy expensive shoes or uh, expensive Rolex. It's a way to you know flex, but also you know show off a little bit of our personality. The only problem up until now is that there hasn't been any way to verify that you actually own that image that you're using as your profile photo. But Twitter is about to change that. That value add of the clout that you're gaining by owning that NFT is starting to become a little bit more real. When we talk about if something is rare or desirable, it can honestly be pretty subjective at its core. Technically, my Mewtwo card is only rare and worth anything because a large group of people have gotten together and decided that it is. And of course, it's backed up by their wallets. Obviously, there's a growing community out there who have gotten together and agreed that this image is more rare than this image, and so it is. Something that's considered a valuable piece of artwork to me and other collectors is just a piece of cheap cardboard to others. And what some consider to be an expensive symbol of status is just air to others. As we slowly begin to transition our life and our experiences over to the digital world, I do see the merit of owning digital property. And of course, it's a way to um, flex and to show off your personality and what you're interested in. And I don't want to get through this video without mentioning that I think that NFTs have done a tremendous service to artists. I'm an artist and a creator myself, and so being able to see this renaissance of people being able to actually uh, show off and share and be appreciated for their digital artwork is really cool. Is there room for more innovation within the NFT space? I think absolutely, but it could be that NFTs are here to stay. But then again, perhaps it is just a fad, and once people come to their senses and realize how ridiculous they are, they'll move on. I've told you enough about what I think, but what do you think? Do you think I've made any valid points here, or am I completely off base? Let me know what you think about NFTs in the comments below. And lastly, I wanna let you know that if you stumbled across this video, I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Um, basically, this channel has been dedicated to my love for Pokemon cards, and I got back into the hobby pretty recently to chase that feeling of nostalgia from my childhood. I grew up in the 90s and got back into it. If that's something that interests you, I think you'll wanna check out one of these videos on screen next, and subscribe so you can come along the journey with me. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.